I, Bexky, Bexky, take it away. Uh, hi, thank you so much. Um, my name is Bexky. I'm going to be running Tomb Raider today. It's going to be glitchless, which is a bit of a change for me. Um, I'm going to jump right in because it's quite a long run, so we'll get it started. Um, time is going to start when I skip the first cutscene. So in three, two, one, go. Um, Jess, if you'd like to introduce yourself as well. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is The Valiant Sun, but you can also call me Jess, and I'm here to support Bexy during this awesome, amazing, just amazing Tomb Raider run. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with me. Um, so we're starting off in the mountain caves of Peru. Um, I honestly dread to think how many times I've played through this level <laughs> over the years. Um, I've been speedrunning Tomb Raider since like 2018. That's a long time. Started off with Glitchless. Um, most of the runs that I've done on GDQ have been glitched actually, so this is a first for me. But it would be so fun to show off some of the, the Glitchless tech. Because there are still some skips. Um, Caves is a pretty chill level, other than this jump that's coming up here, which hopefully we'll get. So I'm going to try and jump onto this bridge. I think I've missed it. I'll grab it instead. So one tricky thing about um, Tomb Raider 1 is... Um, that Lara doesn't jump exactly when you tell her to. Um, it's something that they fixed in Tomb Raider 2, but it is something that we have to play around in Tomb Raider 1, makes things a bit tricky sometimes. Um, and I did read that it's um, all down to Toby Guard. So Toby Guard is the creator of Lara, and um, I read some Tomb Raider lore that he's the reason behind the fact that um, Lara has to take an extra step sometimes when she jumps to complete an animation because he was quite pedantic about that so thank you Toby for that yeah I was gonna ask if it needed like the character model to be in a space for the jump to occur yeah so it's something that they fixed with Tomb Raider 2 um but because Toby Guard left I think by then but he he was quite pedantic about um wanting it to look as realistic as possible so it, it does make things a little tricky sometimes, but we, we kind of play around it. We have a lot of setups that are designed around um, counting Lara's steps so that we know kind of which foot she's she's going to be jumping off of. Um, but yeah, that, that bridge jump at the, at the beginning is pretty tricky because of that. We just got a med pack there, I think. Yeah, uh, med packs are going to be pretty important in this run. Um, ideally, I won't be using one for a while, but they're there if we need them. Um, health management is is a, pr a pretty tricky thing to wrestle with in this run because enemies do do deal quite a lot of damage. Even the wolves and the bats at the beginning are, are quite hard hitting at times. Um, so we do want to dispatch of as many walls as we can hopefully we're gonna we're gonna be able to kill all of them by the time i run into some um some swinging axes and stuff like that Block pulling is probably my least favourite part of Classic Team Raider. But it's unavoidable, unfortunately, and glitchless. What is um, maybe so the time difference between like a glitched run versus a glitchless run? There's quite a lot of... Uh, well, the glitch run is... Um, there's a lot of glitches in this game, basically. It's, honestly, it's pretty hard to not glitch at times. One of my m most recent PBs, I accidentally glitched in it and I had to take a like a 10 second penalty because of it, because it's, it's really hard to avoid a lot of the glitches. Um, but the time difference is about approximately 40 minutes. So glitch shaves quite a bit of time. 
off the run. Um, I would honestly say from running both that glitchless is actually a little harder because I mean there's a lot because it's a lot longer there's a lot more places that can go wrong um, but also the platforming in this game is, is quite difficult at times just because of the, the tank controls and Lara just likes to do her own thing a lot of the time She's she's got a mind of her own does our Lara we still love her though Um, and if you are interested in seeing any of the glitches, I do have um, an incentive for a glitch showcase that you can donate towards. Speaking of donations, do we have any coming in so far? We definitely do. I was just about to say, you know, you were looking for donations for that incentive and we are yes. almost halfway there. We have $990 out of 2000. So let's let's put us over that halfway mark. We have a $10 donation from Amy Quill who says, good luck with the run. And a $50 donation from Skiles who says, good luck on a great week of going fast. Tomb Raider is such a great way to kick things off. Smiley face. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we awesome. all agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm honored, honestly, to be opening the event um, with some Tomb Raider, my, one of my favorite games. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for those. Um, so we're coming to the end of this level. I, My health is looking okay. We do have to watch out for a bear at the end of this level. Hopefully he's nice to us today. Um, and another another thing that I have to watch out for... Is he being friendly? Yeah, okay. Um, is I haven't saved yet, but I will save soon. Um, because there is no auto-saving in this game. It's old school. So we've got to remember to, to save every now and again. There's also no... On PC, there's no... We can save wherever we want. So you, you guys might remember on PlayStation or if you have played this on Sega Saturn, um, you used to save with save crystals, but there's no save crystals on PC. We can save wherever we want, but you can't restart the level if you die. Um, so yeah, I'm probably going to do my first save here, actually. Because there's a rather big enemy coming up that can kill us in one bite. Oh, there we go. We tried. Easy peasy. <laughs> I love how Lara's just not phased. One of my favorite things about the classic Tomb Raider games actually is that there is um, there are T Rexes in one, two, and three just casually thrown in there, because why not? Maybe that's why Lara's not faced <laughs> dinosaurs there, because they're just all over the world. <laughs> um, so I've got to be careful whenever I'm running around this area, because the T-Rex will be following me around. We could kill it, but it would just take too long, basically. Um, there are a few safe spots where you can shoot the T-Rex from. Um, but it it's pretty tanky and we only have pistols at the moment um, the aim of what I'm running around doing right now is I'm collecting three cogs because there is a waterfall towards the beginning of the level that we need to get behind and for whatever reason Lara just can't climb behind it I guess it's a pretty heavy waterfall um, so we need these three cogs to be able to change the flow of water the raptors can be pretty mean. Um, and this is a spot coming up where I'm going to be counting my steps over this bridge to make sure I land this jump. So I'm going to do one running jump and then I'm going to count three steps. And that works every time.
And we're gonna collect our final cog here and then do a little jump. I'm probably gonna save again just in case. This is probably um, the first point of the run that is like a major reset point and it's all because of this T-Rex. Ideally, okay, I'm gonna load that. It's good that he's roaring there, but ideally we'd want him to roar again as I get closer to this jump here. Okay, we're good. So the T-Rex is, is particularly scary because even just running into him, you, you lose health and it, it drains your health pretty fast as well. And like I say, you can also one-hit kill you, which is not cool. Um, so I'm going to be counting my steps here as well. So I do tend to take an extra step. If you time this perfectly, you can land right in the corner here to prep for this uh, curve jump. I take extra steps just because I really don't want to land in that water because if I land in it, um, the current's going to carry me away and then I'll have to climb all the way back up. And that wouldn't be good. Would you say when you're counting steps, do you do it visually or uh, like I do hear like a footstep sound kind of. So do you usually rely on like the visual or the audio for those step counts? Uh, yeah, definitely the audio for me. I know other runners, uh, maybe it's a mixture of both for other people. But yeah, I hear it. <laughs> it's really hard to unhear it as well after all these years of running this game. Uh, ideally though I would have landed on that slope so I wouldn't have had to go for a swim but that's fine. Um, so that's Lost Valley. Koala Peck is an interesting level so in Glitched we can run through that corner there that we just ran past and trigger the end of the level. Um, so in Glitched you are in and out of this level in like it takes like a minute. Um, Glitchless we're not so lucky so we have to um, do three puzzles and take the long way around. I'm gonna get rid of these raptors. Um, I think, yeah, we had a good Lost Valley, so we have an extra med pack, which is good. In case we need to use it. Because so there is a small boss fight at the end of this level that I need to make sure I have enough health for. <coughs> Um, if there are any donations, this is a great time because this is a pretty chill, <laughs> chill couple of puzzles here. Of course, you know, puzzles are always chill. Well, I have a couple of no comment donations of $100, two anonymous ones, and one from Reverend Gumby. So thank you so much. And one for you from someone you know. Oh. $15 from Thanatos, who says, have to donate for one of my favorite runners. Bring on oh. the shambles. Yeah. <laughs> I knew shambles would be in there somewhere. Thank you so much, Thanatos. I really appreciate that. It's really kind of you. It's for a great cause. Um, yeah, so, so this is the second puzzle room. Um, we do want to do these puzzle rooms in a particular order, just because right in the final one that will spawn an extra raptor so we're gonna try and avoid killing him if we can because it's slow um but there's not too much going on in here um i may pick up this small med just just as a little safety Ideally, you don't want to be picking up too many small meds because they only refill half your health, but it can be nice sometimes. Just have a little extra. Um, and this is probably the trickiest strat in this level, so um, I'm going to line Lara up. I'm going to save just in case I fail it so I don't need to reset it up. Um, but yeah, basically though, we're doing quite a tight 
curve jump with a late grab to to skip most of the puzzle in this room. Luckily, I got it first try. It's one of those strats that... Um, Oh, Laura just had a little bonk. It's one of those strats that psychs me out a bit sometimes. Usually I can get it like at least like 90% of the time. Sometimes it's like a 50-50. I'm having a bad day. Yeah, you really made that look really easy, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Like... It, it is a tricky one though, yeah. It's just the timing of, of the late grab really and making sure Laura's curved enough for it. Yeah, so here's the raptor that spawned. I'm going to try and run away from him as quickly as I can. Um, so this is the long way round. We opened these three gates so that we can go this way round to grab our first piece of the ski on, which is what Lara's um, been looking for in Peru. Um, there's Qualapec. Probably seen better days, I would say. Um, so now we can leave. This raptor does not like me. And the whole place is gonna collapse. Sometimes he's... he's he just stays back and he doesn't touch you at all. I, I got unlucky though. Um, we have a small boss fight here, so... Larson here is going to take pot shots at us. I'm going to save just in case because I, I would rather not use a med if I can avoid it. Oh, Larson's being a potato, it's fine. Nothing <laughs> to worry about. So, Larson is one of Natla's henchmen, um, just to explain a bit about the story. Um, Natla is a lady who sent us on this journey to look for the ski on. Um, and then she like double crossed us and sent uh, Larson's kill us. Um, Larson failed and now we're kind of looking for the rest of the ski on um, off our own backs basically. Um, Natla's up to some, some dodgy stuff uh, which we'll find out a bit later in the game. That's that's the basic <laughs> plot line. Um, so now we're in Greece, which is probably my favorite area of the game. I like the Greece levels. Here we're gonna try and avoid hitting that pressure plate there, because if you if you touch that that door will close, and you have to pull a lever to open it again. Um, that would also trigger a guy called Pierre, who's going to follow me around um, until I get the opportunity to kill him. Um, so we want to avoid triggering him in this room, and we're going to uh, we're going to have to trigger him at the end of the level instead. But usually he he has potato aim at the end of the level, so it's not as bad. Unfortunately, he has to show up somewhere. He gets really annoying, Pierre. I just really enjoy the term potato as a... Yeah. <laughs> a potato aim. I was playing this the other day on um, Steam Deck. So originally on Steam, this game plays through DOSBox. And it's like a bare bones version of the game um, with no soundtrack. Because originally on PC, this game didn't have the soundtrack. And it's sad. It's really, I don't like playing it without the soundtrack because the soundtrack's so good. It does make it feel really eerie though. With no soundtrack, only background noise. This music's like a bop, so I definitely would feel just like the background music. It feels music. empty without the music, yeah. Um... So we are actually, on PC, we play a version, um, it, it's a patched version of the game, it's called Tomb ATI, and it's really good, so that's why I'm able to play in widescreen. Um, and there's this option to smooth out the graphics as well, because I could, if I press F3, I can pixelate the graphics, maybe you can tell. 
Um, then I press it again and it smooths it out. So it makes it look really nice. And uh, yeah, it adds the soundtrack back in, which is awesome because the soundtrack's really good. Let me save here just in case I something goes dreadfully wrong. Um, so Sir Francis Folly is based on um, these four um, puzzle rooms that are based on Greek gods. Um, so that was Dam Damocles. So we need to collect four different keys from, from these rooms to get out of this level. The second one that we're going to do is right at the top, which is Neptune. And if you know your Greek gods, then Neptune isn't actually <laughs> the Greek name. It should be Poseidon, but we'll let the game off. It's something that they actually fixed in the remaster. Not in the remaster, sorry. In the in Tomb Raider Anniversary, they fixed the names. So they changed Neptune to Poseidon and I think Thor the Hephaestus, if that's how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure, but... You get the idea anyway. I love the idea though of just, yes, this is the Greek place. We will put all of the mythos. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they throw a bit of Roman and Norse in there as well. Who cares? You get the idea. It's fine. Um, yeah, so that's the Neptune key. I'm going to save here because I died here in practice the other day. I'm kind of, I feel like the more you play Tomb Raider, the more scarred you get from, from all the potential places that there are to die. <laughs> there are so many places where you can die in this game that you, you wouldn't ever really expect, honestly. I'm going to save here as well because this is a bit tricky. I failed it. Okay, that's fine. Oh, there we go. So Bestie, do you mind if I roll in with some donations? Oh, no, of course. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a $100 donation from Guerlain who says, Frame Fatale's events are always so joyful. Looking forward to a great week of runs and so happy to support National Women's Law Center. Good luck to the runners. And a $25 donation from EDL666 who says, I'm so hyped for the lineup of games today. My top three is Tomb Raider, Kirby Squeak Squad, and Haven. Good luck to all the runners. Oh yeah, repping the Tomb Raider. Thank you so much for all the donos. Um, okay, so this is the last puzzle room um, for, it's funny, when you enter that room, I actually have no idea what the dev intended strat is, because I remember reading the Prima guide back in the day, and I don't even think they gave a proper strategy for it. I think they literally just said, make sure you go in there with full health, because, um, the, I don't know, there just doesn't seem to be a dev intended way to get about that room, but if you do dive in there when you enter it, um, it is safe. You can also do um, a run and jump and grab, and that is usually safe as well. And do kind of a scary call. So I'm going to dive on my way back as well. I'm not 100% sure why the dive is safe. I don't know if she has some invincibility when she dives. If it's just the timing of it. So here's Pierre. We're gonna largely ignore Pierre. As much as we can. But I do need to get rid of those lions because they are pretty scary when they come into contact with Lara. My health's looking pretty low, so I'm gonna heal. So here's where we kind of have to pray to the RNG gods and hope that he uh, has that potato aim while I'm putting these keys in the wall. I'm 
I'm like very closely watching my health bar right now. I should be okay. Uh, I'm gone. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> I might need to heal. I'm trying to get out of here without using a med pack, but I think I'm going to have to just use one. It's fine. That's such a waste of a med pack, though. <laughs> that it's fine, I'll just have to pick up a couple extra in this level. That was some bad Pierre RNG. I think it's because he was... Sometimes he he's a, he stands a bit further away in that room, but he was pretty close to us then. But it's fine. Uh, so Colosseum is a pretty straightforward level. Um, there's one kind of big skip. Um, in this level that is really easy to do. I think even a lot of casual players have started doing it. I'll point it out when I get there. Uh, but it means that we can avoid a lot of the dev intended stuff in this level. So we never even need to go down into the Colosseum. We can just stay up here, which is quite nice. There's Pierre again. Leave me so you can shoot at him and he, he will eventually run away. He tends to come back. There's like multiple spots where he spawns on a level. Um, so this is the major skip and it's just a small curve jump, which is quite easy to do. These gorillas are going to be frozen because everything in this game is based on tiles. And because I haven't touched the tile yet for the... Um, gorilla spawn because I came up an unconventional way. Um, these gorillas haven't haven't been triggered, <laughs> so they're just chilling. And I'm gonna pick up this small med just to be safe. So these gorillas are going to trigger because um, this is the way that we should be jumping up from there, where I just landed. So when I make my way back up there, they'll be on the move. Okay, speaking of on the move, we have a $500 donation for you from a Eric 72 who says, I will be forever grateful to Bexky, who once recommended Wensleydale with cranberries on one of her streams. It is now my favorite cheese. <laughs> that is a great cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Goes really well with You're potatoes. Welcome. Goes really well with potatoes. If anyone wants to share any potato potato themed donations i would love to read them on air <laughs> or cheese related anything cheese related is great <laughs> oh let me i'm gonna heal just because my health's pretty low he has being mean um this is the secret that we're gonna grab here we're gonna skip most of the secrets in this game but this is um a nice one it gives us quite a bit of loot two large reds of the magnums can't can't ignore that and some easy clips for later i can't get over how smooth that movement was that you just <laughs> did to get up here yeah it, it feels great when you first do that yeah I don't know how many times I've done that sequence now, though. <laughs> um, it's funny because I was practicing this yesterday and my partner was watching me and he like wasn't really that... In well, he was interested, but he, he didn't really understand it until he picked it up and tried to play caves and he just couldn't... He was just struggling with every jump. <laughs> like, if you haven't played Tomb Raider before, you haven't played in a while, I think... Um, it's maybe a bit hard to understand when you watch a speedrun how just how difficult it is actually to control Lara. I'm a tank control kid though, so <laughs> tank controls are fine with me. Oh, 
somebody in the chat a while ago said they bet you'd be a great tank driver in real life. <laughs> and oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you've got a $13 donation from non-binary code who says donating my favorite number again out of baffled fascination. I mean, I for one could never casually ignore dinosaurs like Lara Croft. I love dinos too much. And now the Jurassic Park theme is stuck in my head again. Anyways, let's get that glitch, glitch exhibition. Yeah, we, we just have a little bit over $200 to make it to that $2,000 mark. Of course, our donation's just a little bit over that. So keep on donating to that incentive. We want to see these glitches and the other kind of cheese. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I'm I'm super excited for the glitch exhibition if it gets met. There are a lot of glitches in this game. You see that gorilla then? I saw he just jumped in the air. Um, yeah, there are a lot of cool glitches in, in this game, so I had to just pick a couple of my favorites. But um, if you are interested, I I've run glitched a, a few times before, and and there are many. Um, videos on YouTube of, of cool glitch runs of this game and uh, they're all really cool to watch. Any of the classic games um, are really fun speedruns to watch I would say but also like just every Tomb Raider game new and old are like super glitchy. <laughs> it's like the um, the uh, it's just funny because they don't get any less glitchy The, even the later on that they are. So now we're in Palace Midas. Um, this is a really tricky level. This is another major reset point of the run. Um, there are a lot of enemies in this level and they they like to gang up on Lara. So straight away we've got a few gorillas. I'm going to pick these ones off because there's a room... Um, that we have to go into at the end um, and we want as few gorillas to follow us in there as possible so we're going to get rid of these ones first um, unfortunately though we're going to have to let a lot of the zoo in this level live because otherwise um, it would just take forever to kill them all so you'll see later how like tricky this level can be RNG wise or well, hopefully not hopefully it'll go great and we'll be, uh, everything will be fine. Ugh, messed up my sequence there, that's fine. The one sad thing is when you have to reload, you, you lose the music. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've messed up my sequence a bit here, so my steps are off. But we'll get there. Fine. There we go, that should work. It's quite tight, that sequence. Um, we're going to attempt it on the way back as well. Oh, never mind. I jumped too early. It's fine. So you can jump back over those pillars. Um, and it is slightly faster. You do lose a bit of health because of the flames. But um, you can also swim back. It's just not as um, snazzy. But that's fine. So you've mentioned grabbing a couple of times. So do you have to do an input in order to grab then for... You do, ledges? yeah. You do. Um, on the remaster, they've changed it. Well, they haven't changed it. There, there's old controls and modern controls on the remaster, and I believe for modern controls, she just automatically grabs, which is cool. The modern controls are like kind of tricky, though. Um, maybe it might just be for me because I'm so used to tank controls, but they they do feel a bit janky. But at least the options there. It's a pretty cool addition to the remaster. And it looks great as well. They, they've done a really good job of, of the graphics. Lara looks great. Um, 
I'd recommend the remasters. So this is a pretty tricky sequence. I'm going to do it um, a bit of a slower way just to ensure that I don't land on those spikes underneath. And then we're going to grab this second mud bar. So the aim of this level is to, we need to collect three lead bars and then turn them into gold um, to make it onto the next level. Um, I almost forgot which leaders to pull then, it's these two. And I'm going to do something a bit funky here, so I'm going to land on this pillar um, and that might seem superfluous. But there's a reason I'm doing it, and it's um, a bit of a flip map uh, manipulation. So in this room that I'm coming into now, um, this wouldn't normally be filled with sand. Um, it has two forms, so one is without the sand and one is with. Um, normally you'd have to pull a block out, which is supposedly... Supposedly that releases the sand, but we can ignore that just by jumping on that pillar in that center room. And I, I don't know why it works. I don't know why that triggers the flip map, but it just does. So that's a cool little skip. Saves a bit of time. Also, that room really looked like a pile of mashed potatoes. And I I, <laughs> I think uh, yeah. I think some potato donations are coming in. I have a $25 donation from Surf Wizard who says, if you cook minced garlic at a low temperature, it turns green like oxidized copper. Something to do with phosphorus, I believe. But if you use the minced garlic and mix it with mashed potatoes, you end up with naturally green mashed potatoes just in time for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Thank you so much. And a $10 donation from LBB22, who says potatoes and cheese is a match made in heaven. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> he doesn't love potatoes. Potatoes are great. Seriously, keep the, keep the potato donations coming. <laughs> um, okay, so there's the lion here. I'm actually going to switch to pistols because um, we want to save that magnum ammo for later. And I would normally try and jump around this lion, but I'm going to shoot him because I have had runs die to getting stuck on the lion. And you're dead in like three bites if you get if you get stuck on one of those. It's like an easy run killer. So the third lead bar is a bit um, a bit out of the way. I always used to get lost in this level when I was a kid because the first two puzzle rooms are pretty straightforward. Like the first one with flames, the second one with the spikes, and then the third one is like this weird sand room and then you have to run like all the way across the map to this roof where the, the third lead bar is. Me and my dad used to get hopelessly stuck on this level. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, so now we need to find our way to Midas's hand. So I'm going to open this gate. I'm going to save here because now I'm going to have a whole zoo after me. Um, so I'm going to try and take pot shots at these enemies as I go. It's probably unlikely that I'm going to actually be able to kill any of them, but you never know. I might be able to get one or two. But you can see how how many there are and how long it would take if I, if I stood and tried to shoot them all. There's a lot. There's more in here as well. So do the AI have a, a point where they stop trying to follow you, like an area where they're they're active, or will they just keep following you? Yeah, not particularly. They just keep following you. Um, I think the only place where they wouldn't, like there's a couple places we use in Egypt where there's a tile with a door, um, and if you stand on that and the door's shut, 
that the enemy can't follow you onto that tile. Well, let me just check I did all three there, yeah. Um, but in this level, the, they just follow you <laughs> wherever they can, and they can follow you everywhere. They can climb up onto things as well. Um, and I, I was I was stood... Um, that might have looked a bit funny when I was uh, turning those lead bars into gold. Uh, the reason I stood like that was just to ensure, basically, that Lara's not going to stand on the hand. Because if, if you to hold forward an action at that hand, then Lara's going to be turning herself into gold, which is not what we want. As cool as that animation is. We want gold splits, not gold Laura. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is definitely not a gold split Midas for me, though, but that's fine. Um, by the way, there's a song called Midas Touch. I don't know if anyone's heard it, but this level always reminds me of it, and it's it's a banger. <laughs> I think it's an 80s song, but it's, um, it's a tune. Right, okay, so now we have all the gold bars. Um... There's going to be another lion in here, which... Okay, that's good that you went down there. Um, this is where the real fun begins. So if I dawdled too much, or basically if I just got lucky, all of those gorillas are going to follow me into this room. Plus a few lions. Um, if I'm lucky, though, they won't. I can already hear one. But I'm going to save here just in case. Because this can be chaos if things go wrong. Heal. Okay, we're we're fine. We're living. We made it out of the That's that's a huge run killer, that room. The lions can't follow you up onto those. Um where you're putting the the gold bar are in but the gorillas can and they can they can stop you from inputting the bar and just drain your health like crazy so it's a bit of a scary level that one but we made it so that's good on to a level with mutant rats i'm gonna say i'm gonna need to count my steps right at the beginning of the level here Three, four, five. One, two, three. So Cistern is another pretty big level. Um, this involves changing the water levels to allow us access into into different rooms. Um, we're going to start off with the the water level lowered. Try and get rid of this rat. Try and do this the fast way. Pierre's going to spawn again in the upcoming room. Hopefully, he doesn't cause us too much, too many issues. Um, and there's another tricky jump coming up. He's so annoying. I hate Pia. Hey, but I guess get... what? You have just met that glitch exhibition incentive. So everyone, oh, thank nice. you so much for raising that $2,000. And now you're feeling like pure Yukon gold. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. That's exciting. You see what you did there? <laughs> <laughs> I have some real love for this, like $25 from Static Crowbar, who says, Tomb Raider was one of my most cherished memories from childhood, and you are making this look so easy. That is definitely <laughs> true. You. I'm trying. And a $15 donation from Petty, who says, Bexky's streams are always a comfy time. Tomb Raider remains a great game. And the National Women's Law Center is a very important cause. So I frankly have no excuse to not donate. Keep up the great work, everyone. Thank you so much, Petty. 
Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Um, so there, there are a lot of keys to collect in this level. Um, there's two rusty keys, two silver keys, and a gold key. So there's a lot of work to be done in this level. We're like halfway there. That is a lot of keys. Do you have like a max inventory, like sort of space for the game, or are you able um, to just like pick up question. anything you want? I think you should, can just pick as, up as much as you want. Yeah. Um, the rusty keys get used as we go along, though. Anyway, so um, the main ones we need to progress are the the two silver and the gold. To get to the end of the level. <laughs> the rats are really cute on the swimming. Well, speaking of cute things, we do have a bid war open right now for our next run time spinner. If you bid, you get to put your donation towards the familiar choice. So we've got Demon in the lead right now and Griffin coming up second, but let's get that bid war going and get some cuteness. That slope there is um, a bit of a death trap. You have to be careful how you fall onto it because if Lara um, falls and touches the wall on the opposite side of it, she will glitch and fall. She'll like glitch up and fall from like a, a really tall height and she'll just die. That's happened to me many times. There's like a million and one ways to die in this game. No, but we're on our way to completing this level. So we're going to use our last rusty key here. Spikes can't hurt us underwater for some reason, so that's good. Just swim right on through them. Grab this last gold key and let me watch my health. So many locations and levers and things like in, in the Midas floor, you, you said it took you a moment to remember, but it was just like watching you like choose which levers to flip. And it's like, okay, we got to Yeah, I brain fart there sometimes. <laughs> it's just because there's, um, there's like what, three or four different combinations that you have to do for the levers. It gets confusing sometimes. I'm going to use a med here because my health is a little low. And there are going to be two lions in this upcoming room. Hopefully they are nice to me. I'm going to try and get to pull in this block before they catch up to me. Um, sometimes they will... They'll roar at you and they'll spawn on top of this block, which isn't too bad, but they didn't do it this time. We got away with it. Um, so now we're on Tumor Token. This is the last level of Greece. It throws you into this underwater sequence where I, I can't remember. I don't think there's a way to breathe. <laughs> I don't remember, but it's a pretty scary um, level to start with. And you're fumbling about trying to look for that lever. Um, and in the upcoming room, there's going to be a crocodile that I am going to kill because um, if I don't, he will deal phantom damage to me later. It's 
I'm gonna make sure I get rid of him. Um, and then there are a couple cool skips in this level, so the first one is coming up here. So instead of pulling this lever, I'm going to find, um, I'm going to turn and find a little visual clue. That should be okay. I'm going to land on this tile. Um, so if I pulled the lever, it would have raised the water in this room and I would, have, I would have been able to swim into this section, but the current wouldn't have carried me along. So I would have had to pull another underwater lever to like turn the current on, I guess. Um, so doing that little strat saves quite a bit of time. Saves us from pulling that extra lever. And wow. Pierre made... Oh, sorry, go <laughs> We just had a $300 donation from Marty. Thank you so much, no comment. Marty has been left speechless by how cool <laughs> exactly. this movement tech is. <laughs> We've got a lot of no comment donations. We've got $25 from Jamie, $25 from Madge Danvers. Yeah, I could go on with those. There's a lot. So thank you all so much for donating to National Women's Law Center. How much have we raised so far? We have raised $2,773. According awesome. to my, my tallies, and we are have just opened up a new incentive for Kirby Squeak Squad. We can see Metal Kirby fighting the final boss. And if you haven't seen that, it is uh, it is a time. It's a mood. So you definitely want to see that. I love Kirby. Okay, so sometimes in a in a speed run we might want to leave that lion alive just because it wastes a bit of time killing it. But I that has definitely been another run killer for me. I pretty much died to everything so far um, in this game. Nothing phases me anymore. Uh, just do a quick med check. I am going to grab this one anyway, but... Um, meds are going to be, again, that they are very important throughout the entire game, to be honest, but late game, Egypt onwards, um, the enemies hit really hard, and the AI is very janky, so we want to make sure that we have enough meds to deal with that by then. And this is um, this is a, another a block pushing sequence that we can't avoid, unfortunately. You even have to do this in glitch. So if there is anything to read, then this is this is a great time. I mean, certainly I'd be happy to. We have again so many donations left with no comment, left speechless by your platforming, and chat <laughs> is all over it as well. You've got. $25 from Anonymous times two, $25 from The End Beta, $50 from Night Flyer, et cetera. I mean, you've just got so much love coming in. And also we've got $10 from Chris who says, good luck and have fun to all runners. Won't get the chance to watch the streams next week. So donating while I get the chance to watch live. Great to see UK speedrunners representing too. Enjoy the week. Hi, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for all those donations. Um, so there are four, like, pressure plates in here, but we only need to hit these two. These are the only two compulsory ones that we need to, to hit to progress. It is really unfortunate. This is the only thing I don't like about Classic Humid. I know I said it earlier, but the block pushing gets really tedious. It's so slow. Oops, I did want to land on that. I'm going to save because there is what we affectionately call um, a clang clang door, <laughs> like a metal spike trap, I guess. I've always just called it a clang clang door, never questioned it. Clang clang. clang it clang clangs, <laughs> exactly. 
Um, so we're going to use these two key keys here. Um, finally, right at the end of this level coming up, we are going to be able to get our revenge on Pierre. So I'm very excited about that. My favourite point in the run. And then he's not going to be able to follow us around anymore. First, we're going to go for a little swim. I keep getting jump scared by those crocodiles <laughs> and they're just like they're unfazed. Everywhere. Yeah. Have you played much Tomb Raider, Jess? Um, I know that I, like, I had to have played one because I have, like, a vivid memory yeah. of it, but I can't tell you which one it was or, like, when it, yeah. when it was. I think everyone's played it a little or a demo or, like, something like that. I would I definitely say... I'm just so impressed. Also, yeah, they, they are great games. Um, it's, they're probably not for everyone, especially the classic ones, because they do have quite an awkward control scheme. Um, but with the remasters that have just come out, I, I would recommend, if, if anyone is interested in getting into classic Tomb Raider, the remasters are a great way in. Because um, a really cool feature of the remasters as well is that you can play with the modern graphics and you can just switch on the fly to the old graphics if you wanted. Which is quite nice. They also fixed, I my, I think I mentioned it earlier, but they fixed the responsive jumping as well. And Lara can jump twist like she can in Tomb Raider 2, which is really cool. Oh, Pierre, I got stuck on him. Never mind that naked lady on the back of his jacket. <laughs> Okay, hopefully I can still pick these up. Sometimes um, if you kill Pierre on the edge of a step, the pickup bugs out and you can't actually pick up the items. Um, I believe on PC if you save load it fixes it. But it's always a little sketchy when he dies on the edge of a step like that. But yeah, finally got a revenge on Pierre. And now we can progress on to Egypt. A um, little bit of tech as well. You might see me sometimes grabbing at the end of a jump like that. And that is um, the cancel Lara's stumble animation. It saves like minimal amounts of time. But um, it is just a little trick that we have. Um, so I'm going to do a weird little setup right at the beginning of Egypt here. I'm going to do inventory buffering for the first time. Hopefully I've done that right. And then I'm going to frame buffer to, to grab this ledge because that's quite a tight jump. Um, frame buffering, I think, as well, is a feature of um, Tomb ATI, the patch that we use. Um, you can frame advanced Lara, uh, inventory buffering does it by two frames at a time, but frame buffering uh, is one frame. You can do one frame advances with it. But it is, uh, I think it's only a feature of Team ATI because we use the um, F3 and F4 key, which toggles the graphics to do it. Hopefully this mummy is good behaves okay it's already bad that he's down there but i can shoot oh my goodness he's having a time <laughs> he's having a great time down there um if if he got stuck with me in this room i could stand on like I mentioned before, I could stand on the tower where the door is and he wouldn't be able to touch me there. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate that he, he glitched through that block into that room. Um, just because of the time loss from having to kill him, but it's fine. That happens sometimes. So yeah, we have a new batch of enemies in this level. We have pumas, which are a bit of an upgrade from lions. 
Um, and we have mummies, which are just crazy. They have really wild, janky AI. Um, and also sometimes they explode, which is quite random. You can see that later. Let me just check my health real quick. Okay, I think we're okay. I just love how casually the yeah sometimes things explode and that's okay. You're you're really yeah. embodying Laura um, today for the <laughs> just too many of things. Um, I never really questioned it to be honest. I I was thinking about it the other day. I, I was thinking why do they explode? But I don't think anyone has the answer to that. So we're going to have to do a little bit more block pulling and pushing here. The jump that I did uh, at the beginning there, the little curve jump, meant that we could avoid uh, pulling this block to get onto that ledge. Which is nice, I'm always down for that. Avoiding a block push where we can. The upper body strength required to do those block pushes is pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, they look really heavy, don't they? Laura's <laughs> do. got weedy little arms as well. I don't know how she does that. She's got a lot of um, core strength. So in a second, we're going to do another flip map um, manipulation. So I'm going to do something a little weird. I'm going to save here. So I'm going to go down here. Um, and grab onto this, which is going to turn into a slope. But as long as I hold um, jumping up and right Lara will be able to avoid sliding down that slope um, and the reason I did that is again it's a this is a flip map in manipulation so there's a room coming up that is going to be filled with sand now um, and uh, normally like I say you would have to pull a lever to do that but we can avoid avoid it with that little flip map man manipulation and there I just did a sequence to make sure that I could make that ledge because it's a bit of a troll ledge that one um, it kind of looks like you should be able to just run and jump and grab it, but you can't. Um, so you have to make sure that you're jumping right off the edge of it or doing a really late grab to grab onto it. Because um, the idea is that you're meant to fall into that pit of pumas and just die. Because <laughs> the devs are mean. Uh, but yeah, so this is the end of Sea of Carmoon. We are going to be able to just jump right through that texture there. Very convenient. <laughs> Conveniently, yes. And move on to the second level of Egypt. So Obelisk of Carmoon. Um, pretty chill start to the level if, if there is anything else to read. Yeah, I want to encourage everyone to get in your donations for the bid war on Time Spinner to choose that familiar. Demon is still in the lead and wow, guess what? As I was speaking, we just hit $3,000 for National Women's Law Center. Let's go, folks! And Yay. we got a $100 donation from Monk who says, Bexky running Tomb Raider is so cozy and nostalgic for me. Thanks for running for such a great cause and good luck avoiding the shambles. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Monk. I think you've done a good job of avoiding them so far, for sure. I, I've mostly avoided them. We've been, the RNG hasn't been too bad. Um, the Bexky RNG has been okay, so <laughs> we're getting there. Um, um, generally, I, I prefer a shorter speedrun, so the reason why I don't run a whole lot of glitchless is because these runs tend to be around two hours. Um, 
Whereas a lot of the glitched runs are that you cut that time in half, basically. But um, Tomb Raider 1 is a favorite, one of my favorite games, so I'll, I'll forgive its length. I'm gonna get the magnums out here because there is a mummy waiting for us. Oh! Yeah, there's that spontaneous <laughs> combustion. <laughs> so the idea of this level is there are, there are four like artifacts here that we have to collect. Um, we have to lower these bridges so that we can collect them. I'm going to skip most of the platforming in this room by doing a fake grab. Fake grabs are used quite a lot in, in Tomb Raider. And uh, they're easy to do. It's just tapping grab instead of holding it. So that Lara doesn't grab the ledge. She, she will fall underneath it. But you, you will see me use that fairly often. Uh, I'm gonna. I don't. I normally skip over this map, but I'm gonna grab it today. And um, there is quite a tricky jump coming up here that I'm going to attempt. So the, all this skips is it skips um, a rather long shimmy. I'm going to switch to the the pixelated graphics for a second, and I'm going to look for a visual. Um, that should be okay. And then I'm going to look, buffer, curve, and press action at the right moment. It's a late grab, and yeah, that's, that skips quite a long shimmy, so it, it is like a, a decent small little time save. It's quite a tricky jump, that one. It was, it was just so smooth, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm... The Bexky RNG is good today. I'm, I'm getting lucky with those jumps. Um, this level has quite a few tricky jumps. So this one is uh, quite a dangerous one as well. I'm going to save again for it. So we want to curve a little and do a late grab, which um, throws Lara forward a little bit so that she can reach that. A little platform there and then we are going to grab two of these secrets here and um, that should be all of the bridges lowered so we can grab these artifacts and be on our merry way Could we say that this tomb has been raided? Yes. <laughs> it has been raided, yes. <laughs> You've been spectacular with those jumps, and I don't know if chat knows this, but you know who is not spectacular at jumps? Metal Kirby. And I think what we really want to see is we want to see that incentive met where Metal Kirby fights that final boss in Kirby Squeak Squad. So we need $2,000. We got some time to make it. We've just got 80, but let's boost that total up. Impeccable segue there. <laughs> I enjoyed that. All right, so there, there is a mummy here that um, we could uh, just run and try and climb this ledge. Um, but the mummy RNG here is usually not very nice to me, so I'm gonna get rid of him. Or her. It's usually a bit chaotic if you leave that mummy alive and try and grab that ledge. Um, and then we are going to use all of those artifacts on this pillar, which will open the final door. Oh, Lara, fancy going for a swim. Uh, one thing that we do have to be quite careful about, and I can't remember again if this is a PC thing or if this works the same way on all platforms, um, 
You might see me getting my guns out quite a lot and that is normally to cancel like a camera angle change or sometimes Lara pivots faster when she has her guns out so I tend to get them out quite a lot just by default. Um, but if you do that while you're inputting something into a wall like this or using a key, then it can stop the trigger from working. So if I did that at any point there, it could have stopped this door from opening until I ran back past it with my guns unequipped. And now we are on to the final level of Egypt, which is Sanctuary of the Skion. Uh, we're going to do a little um, kind of enemy AI manipulation here. So we're going to walk back so as to hopefully not aggro these guys, but they are, they are aggro. I think I went forward a little bit too much. So it's descended into chaos. This is not what you want. <laughs> Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's fine. Um, normally, though, if you walk back, they will do like a, a creeper walk towards you instead, like very slowly, and they don't aggro. Um, but I think I ran forward a little too much, so they aggroed anyway. But you get a little glimpse there into how janky the AI is for those enemies. Well, chat is eating up the fact that these pyramids are so filled with explosives and in such good shape. <laughs> and yeah. you still have donations from people awed by the uh, the amazing platforming here. We have fifty dollars from Code Yanagi, fifty dollars from Grubrain, and fifty dollars from Corinne. No comments, but thank you so much for supporting National Women's Law Center. Um, so I am taking um, a little bit of a slower route here. There is another route that you can take to get to. Um, the lever that I'm trying to reach and it is it involves grabbing a secret um, Well, you wouldn't grab the secret. So there's a an invisible platform with some Uzis on it Sitting in the sky somewhere um, and you can jump onto that So it's oh nearly fell off the ledge then um, You can land on that platform and go that way around but the platforming for that is is very tricky It's very precise um, and also if you were to grab the Uzis one of the reasons we're not grabbing the Uzis is because um, that would trigger two more of these Atlantean creatures, which we, we don't want because they are really annoying um, and not that easy to kill either. So I, I choose to take the slightly slower route round because it's just a little safer. And um, I'm going to make sure I save here because some of this platforming can get a little scary because we are quite high up. Is there fall damage in this game? Oh, yes, there is. Yeah. Um, so Lara loses health if she falls from certain heights, but there are certain heights that are just like killers. Like she, she can't take the damage. Um, so when I'm up there, if I, if I fell from any of those pillars, I, I, it would have been an instant death. Uh, we've um, been picking up like magma air, or, um, ammo and things. Have you done like any of the challenge run things where like only like pistols or only like certain, um, things in any of your runs yeah um i haven't done pistols only i know a lot of people have done that i've done no loads no meds which is quite a popular challenge category um it took me way too many attempts actually to do no loads no meds i wouldn't even like to say how many it might have been in the hundreds because i i kept trying to speed run it as i was doing it um but yeah no loads no meds is fun um, I know people that have done Nullos, no Nomads, no Pistols only, and all secrets as well. There's some crazy challenge runners out there. Uh, but I always like to go fast. Relatively fast, anyway. The 
so the aim of this level is we're looking for two angsts to, that we can input into the um, the big sphinx to open up a route into the um, final room of this level. So I think we have our first one. Both of them are guarded by centaurs. That shoot, yeah, me that shoot meatballs at us. Yeah, can we talk about that for a second? Talk about the meatballs. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just one of those things, again, it's like just two Raider things. I don't know why they're shooting out meatballs, but <laughs> it's just, just one of those things. Well, we got meatballs, but also, I got to say, cheese and potatoes are back. <laughs> we oh, got nice. a $50 donation from Cassini, who says, It's been a while since I've been able to catch a Bexky stream, but I recall them as always being a fun, cozy time. And there was occasionally a cheese hat. Best of luck, Bex. <laughs> yeah. and Thank you so much. Ten dollars from Potato Pyramid, who says, "Thank you for Bexki for making this look so easy." And to our wonderful commentator and host, so excited to donate to my first live GDQ event. Let's get Metal Kirby going. And yes, we've got that Metal Kirby incentive and a bid war for our next game time spinner. So keep on putting those bids towards your favorite familiar. Yeah, so this is quite a, a scary room only because um, there is one flying mutant that I can hear. If I hear his flapping wings, then I, I start to get a bit nervous because if he falls in, us into this room, again, it can just be chaos. Um, so far, so good, though. Ow. It's really going at us with those meatballs. Okay, so we made it out there alive, which is good. Um, uh, another mutant has spawned here. Annoyingly. Okay, they need to go away. So now we can input these angsts into top of the sphinx. Um, there is a little tip that I have actually. If if anyone plays this game and you come up here and there is a flying guy um, harassing you, then you can just hang off the sphinx and um, he will fly away eventually. Because that has happened to me a couple times and it's a nice little save. Luckily, we didn't have to do it there. Um, so down here, we're going to pull a lever, which is going to activate a current that's going to pull us up. Um, in Glitch, there's a, a cool little trick that you can do on PC where you can save load right as you pull that lever and it stops the current from pulling you up which saves you from doing um, a little bit of platforming. But we do count that as a glitch, so I'm not allowed it in glitchless. I'm so excited to see some of these glitch showcase though right <laughs> after this because i'm just i'm watching the game itself right now and i'm like i could never and i'm just so excited to see what happens like when you yeah. allow glitches to occur oh yeah there's some madness happens there's one particularly um crazy glitch that i'm going to show off that involves like void travel so we're going to be moving lara around in the void which is pretty interesting um, but yeah, so we're coming up to the end of Sanctuary. Um, right here we're going to have um, these tunnels to navigate. navigate. So, so. Um, I'm going to try and fit in as many running jumps as I can in this section. But it's really hard to do it without bonking at least once. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, 
almost. Um, and then here I'm going to do a little strat that is... Um, we thought this was a myth for a while. We didn't know this actually worked or not. But we backstep twice here and run around these steps. Um, it should delay the aggro of a couple of these enemies. Which means that we don't have to waste time shooting them. Okay, that worked pretty well. Um, it's a bit of a hit or miss, that one. Usually it does work. But sometimes they do aggro faster than others. And here is where you would... Kind of pain in my brain. Here's where you would have a showdown with Larson, but we're, we're just going to ignore him. And grab the ski on instead. Larson, by Larson. Larson can live. Whatever, he's no threat. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so yeah, so what happened there? We skipped a cutscene. Um, Natla came. She arrived with three new goons and uh, stole Lara's stuff. So they've taken the ski on off us. And all of our weapons, this is one of those compulsory levels where we have had um, all of our weapons taken off us. We still have our med packs though, which is handy. So yeah, the idea of this level normally would be um, to find uh, three fuses um, to release like a little cabin that has Lara's pistols in. Um, but we're going to just ignore that because right at the start of the next level we will get our pistols back anyway um, and the game's going to give us it's going to be very nice and give us the Uzis so we don't really need to worry about weapons so much in this level well I it's, see block pushing that's my cue that is I gotta read cue. another <laughs> I need to read another donation <laughs> I got $20 from Max or Zero who says it's that time of the year again hell yeah Love you all. Um, okay, so... It's funny, this level, I haven't played it casually in so long. I only just recently played it um, properly with the remaster and I I didn't remember, th remember a thing about it. I had to look up a walkthrough <laughs> to get through it. Um, because we we skip quite a bit of it actually, even in glitchless. Um, and the upcoming jump is uh, again, it's a tricky one. It's another curve jump with a late grab, but it allows us to skip quite a bit of the level. Um, and one of Natla's goons is going to show up here. So this cowboy guy wielding magnums is going to be taking pot shots at us. Personal. But we're going to ignore him. Uh, one second, I'm going to have to redo that. So I want to try and reset Lara's um, footing on that step there. For this to work. There we go. So we're going to ignore that guy that's shooting at us. Uh, and keep running. So yeah, the idea would be that you would get Lara's pistols back and then you'd be able to kill that guy and then you'd get the magnums off him. Um, and then there is a kid on a skateboard coming up <laughs> who's wielding some Uzis. Natla's truly got her, all of her best men on this mission. Hopefully skateboard kid is nice to us. I'm sorry, a skateboard kid? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a kid on a skateboard. I, I don't know where she found him, but... Tony Hawk over there. Uh, usually I, I get pretty lucky with the skateboard kid or Tony Hawk. Um, but I, I've seen some runs die pretty quickly there because the, the Uzis do drain your health uh, quite significantly. 
We got away with it <laughs> decently. So you mentioned before you've you've mentioned like there's remastered controls and then you say tank controls. What, what does tank controls mean actually? Um, that's a good question. How do I explain tank controls? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I no worries. You you move like a tank, so it um I can't control the camera or anything when I'm controlling Lara. Um. And, yeah, I, I don't know how to explain. I don't have a good way to explain, Tank. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I think I'm, that I'm explains sure it very well, actually. I'm sure will be able to explain, Tank. It's just something I'm really used to playing because I'm, I'm a big Resident Evil fan as well, like particularly classic Resident Evil, and, and they use tank controls as well. Uh, but with a fixed camera. I would love yeah, for it's, Capcom to remaster the, the Resident Evil games. That is, that is my dream. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you if you're not a fan of tank controls, um, yeah, like I said, they they have added like a, a different control scheme for the remasters, which is uh, more of a, a modern control where you can move the camera around and. Um, it's a bit funny though because if you want to backflip and stuff, you have to uh, you have to have Lara's guns out. It, it's it's very janky. I, I've tried the modern controls, but I, I couldn't get used to them. But it's it's nice that they have the option. Um, so I'm going to do a little setup here um, that's going to let us get through this door. You're not really meant to be able to get through this door. Again, it's a, a bit of a troll. Um, you're meant to pull another lever to open another door and go round. Um, and that's the reason why this guy here with the shotgun is frozen, because we are we've not ran over the tile to trigger him. Ooh. Which is a shame because this this guy has my favorite line when you run into this room. He says, Say cheese <laughs> and we're missing out on it. <laughs> This always happens to me. This, that, this always happens to me in PB runs where I mess up that jump and fall down the slope and have to climb back up. I think this did happen to me in my PB. Okay. So well, since we're not getting any lines here. about um, cheese from our cheese guy, do we have any cheese donations? Oh, I, you know what? I really wish we had some cheese donations because those would be so Gouda. <laughs> Sorry, those were nice. that was very low hanging fruit. But we do have a fifty dollar donation from Haliox saying "cozy stream, smiley face," and <laughs> don't forget that bid war for Time Spinner, our next game, is going to be closing pretty soon. They're going to be picking their familiar. So far, Griffin is in the lead. But remember, the more cheese donations you get in, the more Kirby we're going to see. So that that incentive is open up to. Please, make me read about cheese. Yeah, tell us your favorite cheeses. I'd love to know. Do you guys have a favorite cheese? Jess, do you have a favorite cheese? I'm, I'm a big fan of an extra sharp cheddar. Oh yeah, you it's... can't beat a cheddar. I'm really embarrassed to admit it, but on my sandwiches, I like a, a cheese product. I like American cheese. All right, like a cheese but, slice. Yeah, but really, I like brie. Mm -hmm. Brie's great. Uh, I'm a big fan of most cheeses, unless it's like a really stinky cheese, like Stilton. I'm not a fan of necessarily, but every other cheese is good. Um, so yeah, uh, like I said, right at um, the start of this level, we get our pistols back, and the game is kind to us and it gives us uh, Uzis. And that's all we're going to need now for the rest of the game. So we're we're in the the final stages now. Um, this is the second last level. 
Um, and the game is very generous with Uzi ammo as well. I, I forget the amount that it actually gives you, but I, someone calculated it once and you, you could end up with like something crazy like 8,000 Uzi ammo by the end of the game if you pick everything up. So there are plenty of pickups for us. Um, the game does start to get a bit weird here. So this is... Um, this is basically what Natla's been up to. She's been trying to create like a new breed. And um, so this level's all about like, I mean, the design of it, it's, it's very like sinewy and bit like bony and weird. And it's actually quite creepy. Did you say she's making a new breed? A new breed, yeah, oh. that, that's what she says, yeah. Mm, I'm sorry, not <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm going to butt in with a $25 donation from Smokey of the Sun, who says, absolutely loving this Tomb Raider run to kick off the event. Big thank you to Bexky for absolutely destroying a game that eight-year-old me was always too, too scared to try and play, especially <laughs> because of the exploding meatballs. For that, donation goes to Runner's Choice. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, it's a lot of people say that Tomb Raider is, is basically a horror game, and I kind of agree with them. I think it definitely... It's definitely horror adjacent in many ways. Um, they kind of nail, like, a, an eerie atmosphere, and, and these levels in particular are pretty creepy in their own way. Um, Atlantis is a fairly long level, um, so you, and you will see me saving quite a few times uh, across this level because uh, a lot could go wrong. Hopefully it doesn't. I'm going to do a setup here to ensure that I can make that jump, which is pretty far. Um, and this is the level that actually it looks really cool in the remaster. Um, not to keep hyping up the remaster, but it, it does look... They, they did a really good job with it. Um, the, like, walls have, like, beaten hearts in them, and it it's, um, it's really cool to look at. Okay, so I'm going to save again here because there is another, like, clang-clang door. And a bit of a sketchy jump to do. Um, sometimes that flying mutant gets in your way and you can't quite make that jump. He was pretty well behaved there. I think this level is also pretty creepy because you have like the constant like beating heart sound in the background. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's there. And also some pots and pans clanging. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but... They're preparing the meatballs. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what terror I have brought on chat and the viewers, but uh, more is coming. We got $5 from Smokey of the Sun saying, E damn! That Gouda pun was unbreerable. Stilton, <laughs> it's tons cheddar than anything I could come up with. Ooh. And $50 from Valerie oh. who said, I'm not sure what a cheese donation is, but here's some cheddar. Oh, look, there's a meatball. Oh Good job, God. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, actually. I love a cheese pun. Those are perfect. Okay, so this next room is um, a little bit scary. Again, we're going to skip the majority of it by doing um, a little curvy jump here. I'm going to save four because it's quite an easy one to fail. So we're basically, this um, this level is really high up, so we're basically like climbing all the way up um, to the top, 
where the, the ski on is and uh, those jumps get, get pretty scary the higher up we get. Um, and then we just have a room full of lava because why not? So I gotta be quite careful here. Because that will insta-kill me if I land on that. Realism in video games, falling in lava, instant kill. What is this? Yeah, I know, yeah. It probably would be an instant kill, that. I don't think I'd like to land in a pit of lava. Um, and there are going to be three mutants here. I'm going to try and um, do a little strat here where if I get... If I'm able to side jump here, they won't be able to do too much damage to me and I can take pot shots at them. Okay, that's good. I actually can't believe we're in Atlantis already. It's gone pretty quickly. I'm on the home straight now. I'm gonna pick up the Susie ammo because it's a nice double pickup. Uh, the game really starts to throw everything at you in these last couple levels. So there's traps galore everywhere and like a million enemies. So that's why I was kind of like hoarding meds throughout the, the whole game. So I've had it a couple times where I've got to the last level and, and had no meds left. And um, you have to take quite, well, you have to take a little bit of force damage in the last level. So it's, it's always good to have some meds left for then. Um, I'm gonna do something a little sus here. If we climb up onto this block, that texture there is, um, has no collision. So we can um, side jump right off it. There was a lot of discussion actually about that when somebody first discovered it and we decided that it wasn't a glitch. Um, and coming up we're going to meet uh, Lara's doppelganger. So I'm going to save here because there is a bug. Um, again, I, I'm not sure if this is a PC bug or if it's a Tomb ATI bug. But if I save in this room where Lara's doppelganger is, the, the doppelganger um, glitches out and she, she refuses to move. And we can't get out of this room unless we kill the doppelganger. And the only way to kill her is um, for her to land in, in that pit that we just opened. Like so. So yeah, you have to be really careful. If something goes wrong in this room, uh, you can't save and reload. You have to do it before. Well, we got lucky, it's fine, we'll get out of there. I just have to say again, like every single time you're like, I have to set up this thing because it's like difficult and then you just, you just make it look like, <laughs> it's just amazing. I am baffled. It's going well. There's been many times where I failed all of this stuff. So, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's going well, unfortunately. Well, you know what's still alive and well? Yes. The, ch the cheese theme. Oh, yes. Let's go. <laughs> My favorite I've got, theme. <laughs> I've got a $25 donation from Anonymous who said, I never realized Stilton was a cheese. I like mozzarella, especially on garlic bread. This is an awesome run, and here's to many more. And a $25 donation from Kame Dar, who says, cheese puns, you say? As Sherlock Holmes would put it, it's Emmental Brie. Dear Watson. Oh my god. Oh. My <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll give you it. I'll give you yeah, it. Yeah, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. <laughs> it's a stretch. I'll give you it. <laughs> and don't forget that bid war for time spinner still going. You want to choose that familiar? Griffin is still in the lead. You can't. <laughs>
Um, I'm appreciating these Back cheese puns, by the way. I'm, I'm appreciating them a lot. Um, so this is an unskippable cutscene right here. Natla's going to explain kind of what she's been up to. There is um, there's a weird way to skip this on um, in the glitched run, and it involves. Um, them to the very basics of it involves quitting out of the game basically and and having to restart it but unfortunately there's no way for us to skip it on glitchless you can't skip it in the remaster though oh <laughs> bye natla lara got lucky there i'm sorry she's so lucky to be able to grab that ledge there um, so this is Natla's new breed. This is the future, according to Natla. This big old torso. We've achieved maximum meatball. <laughs> maximum meatball, yeah. Um, bit of a sketchy start to this fight. Um, the idea is we want to kind of run him around this platform. Um, and we don't want him to touch us because uh, even if he touches us just a little bit, I think it half our health will go. And if he grabs us, it can be an insta-kill. Uh, so we want to try and bait him around this platform without getting caught. You guys ready for a big explosion? Yes, so ready. Boom, there he goes. That was actually pretty underwhelming. <laughs> anyway, there, there goes Torso. Um, so in the glitch exhibition, actually, I'm going to show you how we skip all of this, um, what I'm about to do now. And it's a, it's a pretty crazy skip, but as this is glitchless, I'm going to have to do a bit more block pushing. Do I hear block pushing? Yeah. <laughs> Time for donation. <laughs> I've got $10 from Hecking Gosh, who says, Hi, everybody. I love what you do, supporting causes that benefit those that need it most. I also wanted to help you with your earlier quandary. From what I understand, tank controls mean tilting up on the control stick is always forward from the character's perspective, regardless of the angle of the camera. Left will turn the character to their left, and right turns them to their right. It feels awkward to many, but to me, it makes fixed camera games like Resident Evil much more manageable. Thank you so much for the very yeah, clear thank explanation. You. That's a great explanation, yeah. I am terrible at explaining things at the best of times. <laughs> I had a little mini panic when you asked me to explain Tank, even though I, sh I should really have been able to explain it, but that was a perfect explanation. Thank you for that. No. no worries the, like I, there's so many times when you're just it's like this is the game and this is what I'm yeah. doing wait why am I doing it exactly like stuff that you don't really question a lot of the time my brain also likes to just switch off occasionally <laughs> just forget how to work Um, okay, so we're, we're coming up to the end of the game. Um, I'm going to do uh, a little jump sequence here that I'm going to save for because if I'm not far back enough, I will hit a slope and potentially land in that lava there, which we want to avoid. And then there's a couple of boulders here that we're going to run from. Big old meatballs. There goes my <laughs> hero. <laughs> um, and then the game's about to get a little chaotic. So we've had enough of this ski on. I'm going to shoot it. And then we're going to bring the whole place down. So the camera goes crazy. And the game's going to throw like every trap at us that it can. 
So I'm gonna save here again because I've died here on PB pace and this is like right at the end of the run. So it's pretty tragic. Um, unfortunately, it's really hard to avoid the, the damage from these darts. Um, this is like, it's it's frustrating because for we were talking about challenge runs earlier. Um, for no loads, no meds, this level is probably the most annoying one and it's right at the end. Because um, it just likes to just drain your health, just bit by bit. There's just lava coming at you, like traps everywhere, dart. Swinging axes. It's quite an but intense. It's quite an intense sequence. Will we be saving the animals though? Oh yeah. Well, I I don't think Lara would save the animals. To be honest, she's not very good with animals, Lara. Um, okay, so we just have a couple more things to do before we reach the end. So I'm going to take, this is a bit of a slow sequence over this fire trap, but it it leads us into um, like a perfect jump sequence to land into this hole. And then we're going to have our final showdown with Natla. I'm going to pick up a little more ammo because I'm not quite sure I have enough. That should be enough. Um, it's crazy actually the amount of times when I was doing no loads, no meds that I died to to this boss as well. Like the final boss and I'd mess it up every time. So this is not a perfect fight so far. It's okay. Where's she going? So Natla has two forms, she has this flying form and then um, once she's got knocked out like this she does come back alive but she will be stuck to the ground. I'm like stuck on her wings, there we go. You can uh, bump off me and, my brood so easy, Laura. and we're just going to ignore her second form. She's just going to shoot darts at us but not, not too big a deal. And we're going to climb right the way to the end of the level. Um, so that if there are any more donations, this is a great time because we're like right at the end. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, you may have said that that little flame jump sequence was a little bit slow, but I do have a $50 donation from Hupfen who just says, <laughs> You are going pretty fast. And I've also got a bunch of no comment donations. Thank you so much for these. We've got $40 from Sure Ain't Me, $10 from Chaz ML, and $100 from Lurch. So thank you so much for supporting this great cause. Don't forget that bid war closing pretty soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for all the donations and everything, guys. Um, this is the final final part of the run so once we have made it down this slope the timer is gonna stop and that's time Ooh. ggs gg we made it we did it we did it and the real treasure was the friends we made along the way <laughs> And the cheese puns. <laughs> and the cheese puns we made along the way, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Do I jump right into the glitch exhibition? Yeah, but I do have a donation about it if you don't mind. Oh yeah, of course. Five dollars from Plus Nomad who says, Can't wait for the glitch run. Some spaghetti code to go with those meatballs. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that. That's perfect. All right, so um, thank you so much, guys, for donating towards the glitch exhibition. I'm just going to show off a few uh, glitches varying in difficulty. Um, so I'm actually going to start off with um, an easy one. And this is going to be a small tutorial on how to do a corner bug. Um, so corner bugs are pretty easy to do. Um, you, we do use this quite a lot in Tomb Raider 1 and 2. Um, and the way to do it, if you're on an open ground like this, you want to have Lara's um, outer foot sticking out a tiny bit. And you want to turn to a 45 degree angle. Jump twice and then that's going to teleport Lara um, to the top of the pillar. Um, this does have a specific use in Midas, which is why I brought us here. Um, and if you play the remaster, there is actually an achievement attached to this to do in a corner bug. Um, because there's a, a secret up here that we can't otherwise reach naturally. Uh, so we want to find that like about a 45 degree angle. Lara will turn a bit if we are off. So we want to... Um, this should work, might have to do an extra jump. And there we go, it's a secret little med pack up here. Um, I believe, I was reading about this the other day, some Tomb Raider lore. I think when the devs uh, were about to release Tomb Raider, they actually discovered that the corner bug was a thing. Um, but they like didn't have time to implement code to like fix it all. So I, I think that's why they might have put that med pack up there, just as like a haha, we knew that was <laughs> we knew you could do corner bugs, but um yeah, they left it in anyway. Okay, so the, the second glitch that I'm gonna show off is in um Vilcabamba. There's two of these in the glitched run. Um this glitch was discovered a few years ago, but it, it like completely changed Tomb Raider speedrunning and it is the it's called a quop and you're gonna see why uh, in a second if you have ever played or witnessed um the Bennett Foddy game. Um because Lara does like the same animation that um oh hang on, we're gonna set up that again. I also want to make sure these wolves aren't going to interrupt me while I do this. Um, so yeah, Lara's going to do the same animation that the character does in the Bennett Foddy game co-op. And uh, we have a little setup to be able to do this. So she's going to skate through the floor. And we are going to be able to slide right underneath this door. She can do like a quick sand bug underneath the door. And that skips a fair chunk of Vilcabamba. There is also another quop in Natla's Mines. Um, quops are all the way in Tomb Raider 2 as well as quite a few and in Tomb Raider 3. And you can even do a backwards quop in Tomb Raider 3, which we call a pauk because it's just quops spelled backwards. <laughs> so love a quop. Um, and the, the final glitch that I'm going to show off is um, in Great Pyramid that we just saw in the glitchless run. Right after this guy dies. Um, so the aim of this glitch, this is a, a pretty technical one. So we're going to aim to get from down here to up there um, using void travel. Um, so the start of this glitch, we are going to suck Lara into this wall by holding up and tapping right. Um, and I have to tap it quite gently because we don't want her to... If we go too fast, she will run out of the wall and we don't want that. Um, and then I'm going to hold walk and turn her out a little bit the other way. Like so. And then I'm going to hold walk again and turn her around. So she should be embedded in the wall. And then I'm going to toggle the graphics um, because I'm looking for a specific pixel and I'm having to reset the camera as I do it. So that should be fine. Um, and then I'm going to do, so there's a lot of layers to this glitch. So the next part is to um, do a walk forward, but we want to do like a one frame walk forward. So the way that we're going to do that is to toggle F3 and F4 because that freezes the game. So that allows us to uh, walk forward by one frame. And now we're in the void. Um, 
So the next stage is to uh, inventory buffer five times up and left. Oops. And this uh, advances Lara by two frames at a time. And then the final stage is to jump 21 times. Um, so I'm going to save here. Hopefully this works. If I have failed the setup, I do have uh, one that I know is correct. Usually if this fails, it's because I haven't embedded right or I haven't quite found the right angle. Um, and slight trigger warning because the screen is going to flash uh, once I've completed the jumps. So here we go. Hopefully it works. Okay, so I've done that wrong. Uh, so I'm going to load um, a save where I know that I've got the setup right, which should be this one. Uh, this one. Here we go. So this should work. So I'm going to turn her and press action and roll. And there we go. <laughs> this is what's meant to happen. Um, so we made it all the way down the, the up here via the magic of void travel. Um, a pretty sketchy glitch that. It's cool, uh, it saves quite a lot of time, but it is quite a long setup. So if you fail it, it like also loses a lot of time. But it's cool and um, you will have seen right now in the glitch glitchless run that we came into this room from up there um, and we can't actually shoot the, the ski on here until we run over this tile. So yeah. There we go. That's my little glitched showcase. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for donating. Thank you for watching the run. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I was speechless.